much about them as it is anybody else enjoying the championship. Truly a, a, a team operation. Ryan Brazier rolling up right now. One of these stories of the Red Sox season one year ago, pitching in Japan. Gets going up to the Red Sox in July, and he's eating up innings on the biggest stage in baseball in the World Series. That's a long way from here, a Japan. A remarkable is. story. We're and happy an to have An incredible story for him. And, you know, behind these really strong players are their families who support them, go to all or most of their games, travel with them. His family likely went to Japan with him a couple of times. Yeah, right. and a lot of joy that comes out of this for the players, the ones that have kids, David Price that we've seen, Brock Holt, the list goes on and on. Multiple players have kids. They get to live this with their families as David Price actually rolls through right now. Maybe get a shot of his son Xavier. Certainly someone that had to enjoy this moment as much as anybody on the team. Yep. So sweet. Oh, for his first 11 playoff starts. Comes through as big as anybody on this roster. An incredible performance in Game 5. He appeared three times in the World Series. We said it before. We can't say it enough. He was every bit of deserving of being World Series MVP as Steve Pierce. Mm -hmm. An appearance or two or three or maybe even ten from his kid as well in multiple interviews after the game in, in a way the kids become the star of the yeah. show you know it, it, as we mentioned it's just as important for the parents to to get to enjoy this and, and live it and see it through the eyes of their children the as it is for them to take it all in it's a once right. in a lifetime thing don't forget in boston you waited 86 years to get a title now it's been four and 14 so it, you can't lose sight of, of how rare this can be in the playoffs he certainly made it interesting but when he really needed it in the world series he was nails another boat with sandy leon christian vasquez coming up a lot of smiles on these boats we got the catchers the shot callers overlooked in it at times but so important to, to the pitching game and, and all that they were able to do in the world series well. i remember to that final picture a picture of the pitcher and the catcher embracing Chris, at the end of the game just chris sale the bulldog this team first guy out there to meet him christian vasquez right behind him david price as we mentioned the monkey's off his back he has seemed to enjoy this moment and embrace it and, and really hasn't held back he made some comments after the game that that kind of indicated that some of this has really eaten at him over the years and he gets to enjoy the moment the ultimate prize in baseball they can never take it away from him. 2018 world champions trey did you let them borrow your big uh, boot boot car Good thing, good thing we don't need the all-weather boots today. Yeah, it's a nice day, a beautiful time to be out. It was a little cold this morning, but people are bundled up. They're ready for it, and the energy is still there as more confetti rolls in. The crowds are just going nuts when their favorite player goes by. Yeah, the, the, the confetti bill going to be a high one, but it is obviously <laughs> not a cause for the concern, right? This is about the people of Boston. This is about Boston, and here we go. Mookie Betts, Mookie! Mookie Betts, I hate to ruin it for people, he will be your 2018 American League MVP. The Red Sox probably going to go 1-2 in that race. Mookie Betts will be number one. J.D. Martinez likely going to be number two. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. He brought the fashion this morning. Did you see him rocking the glasses and that corduroy? He, he's always I like got, it. He's always got some style to him. He's got a little flair. Yeah. And, and he shows out on the base path, too. Nobody can pimp a home run quite like Mookie Betts. That's right. It looks like this is our final duck boat. taking a lot of cheering and a lot of excitement as they probably can't even wait for the next season to start yeah, and it's honestly right around the corner sad, april, april soon sadly sadly it is if you don't really have a chance to uh, enjoy that off season all that long you know you're wrapping up here it's halloween it's halloween right now we're going to see this team reporting for spring training in february guys Okay, so from Trey Dare and Elena Pinto, and our images will continue to be carried live here for you of the, the smiles and the celebrations and the confetti and everything that goes with a celebration like this. Um, 
baseball operations here um, along with uh, so many 25 total boats here. We're going to go uh, out to the Boston Common not far from where Trey and Elena are set up right at Tremont and West Street where Justin Doherty and Kiki Wenzel are checking on some of the excitement there and the action and the crowd. So take it away guys. All right, uh, let's let's hang on, Kiki. Justin, we're not hearing your microphones uh, just yet, but when we get those uh, online, we'll go right back to you. Definitely hearing the cheer of the crowd. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. They might be. We're having a, that that experience with a lot of our crews down changing? now. Look at the the people though, from side to side. Yeah, it's, it's a sea. We'll we'll just pause for a second and listen to this. Take you right there. are drowned out by what we call natural sound. It can be frustrating, but in this sense, as we see Justin and Kiki there at work and watching the crowd, it's a good thing to be drowned out by the excitement and the celebration that continues. There again is, is, is Wally and Tessie, uh, part of the, uh, the celebration because they're a part of the team, obviously, but the dynamics that have created this team are just so impressive, and the season, how it ended so impressive, uh, sort of reigniting a fire in this city of, of sports energy that we've never doubted or lacked, but this just brings it to a whole new level. Uh, the confetti is flying still, and it will continue. I mean, we've even seen it come from high-rise buildings. It was cool a while ago from the Sky 7 HD, our helicopter, showing a building under construction, which you might see in the background there. How do and, those people get up there? Well, they had hard hats on, so I'm assuming they're at work today. Oh, maybe they're the construction? Yes. yes but they they the, have the best seat. Maybe they sure not do. every day. Yes, and they had their own confetti machines adding to the excitement. Just um, everyone basking in the culmination of a lot of hard work and an exciting long season. Believe in Boston, that flag says, with the little red clover in the That's middle. easy to do. It, it sure is. 
You don't have to believe. You can just see it. See, proof is in these pictures right now. Uh, the celebration and the excitement. And what's interesting is, you know, uh, the Fenway Park area, tons and tons of people. Then you get to Copley, and it's like a sea of people uh, for as far as you can see. And then it, it, as we go along the common uh, and, and uh, head up Charles, it, 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 it thins out just a bit. But then when we get to the government center area where it all wraps up, the party just grows because a lot of the people, a lot of the fans, they're not just staying in these areas unless they've got some prime real estate. They're following the parade from start to finish. So it'll wrap up at Boston City Hall Plaza where it's going to be uh, a finale like none other, Kim. Well, I was just thinking and checking. There's 37,731 seats at Fenway Park. So while this team is used to hearing their fans cheer them on, nothing like this. Uh, maybe a million people and just the roar of this crowd. And you saw that banner there, people just decorating the city. Uh, just a big thank you for the Red Sox. And I think um, uh, Joe Amrosino is here with us and Dan Johnson of the Boston Globe. And as long as we're in such a good mood, I guess it's not a bad time to sort of revisit the good news on David Price. And then what about some of our other favorite players? Are they sticking around? All right, good questions. We'll start with David Price, who had until 5 o'clock today to either opt out or stay here as a member of the Red Sox. He has said, he came out this morning and said he is staying. He is opting in. He's 33 years old, four years left on his contract at $31 million a year next year, then $32 million the next three. So David Price, no fool. There was a thought at one point in time that he may leave Boston even for less money because he was so unhappy happy here, but he's certainly happy now. But we do have a list of guys who will likely be on their way. Nathan Avaldi is going to get paid. He may stay, but they'll have to pay him. We've got uh, Frank Kimbrell, Dan, who, uh, their closer, who will likely be gone, more than likely, um, as we go down the list right now. Um, guys that are up, uh, coming to mind for you right now who may not be back next well, year. I think you've cited the two people at the top of that list. You know, one, one closer, one starter, and I don't see either one of them coming back. Uh, the Red Sox are at the luxury tax threshold. They were at $237 million this year, and uh, it's not going backwards for them. And the ticket's going to be high on both guys, and I just don't see them uh, reinvesting. Certainly not in Kimbrell. I mean, I, they may decide that Barnes or maybe Kelly can do that job, but Kimbrell's a high ticket item. He's going to get paid by somebody. I'm thinking the Dodgers, somebody like that. And uh, I, I think they've had their, their run with Craig Kimbrell. Even at the end of the World Series, he wasn't even the closer, as far as I'm concerned. Avoldi, it's just going to be too high. They've got high pride guys. Sales coming up after next year. Price, as you point out, 124 million or so on the book still. They're not going to have a third guy in that category. So Avoldi will be gone as well, I believe. And there are many others, but those are the, the two big ones right there, Kim and Adam. And how many people question that Evaldi move and how many people would love him to stay. We did hear from Steve Pierce today, MVP of the World Series, who said he would love to stay. And here are the guys who helped make the decisions. Uh, John Henry, Tom Warner, Sam Kennedy, uh, all the people making uh, decisions on what this team's going to look like and who we're going to pay what. David Ortiz there as well. All right. Our duck boats are now at City Hall. Plaza. So they've made their way from Fenway Park all the way through Copley, and here they come winding around for sort of the final leg of this incredible journey. Amazing to see all of the people. I mean, I can't say that enough. You mentioned the ownership, the ones who write the checks as well. An essential part of, of getting this team together. There again, the World Series trophy uh, with the notable uh, members, Dave Dombrowski, aboard that uh, that vessel. And um, so it's, it's 11 minutes after Afternoon, Kim. So it's taken about one hour to get from Fenway to the government center area, which is the end for the parade. All right, it's not over yet. And Caitlin McCulley and Chris Lambert are right there on City Hall Plaza. So let's get right in the middle of all the uh, craziness. Caitlin, Chris, can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah, hear we got you. you. We got you. Really? It's hard to hear you out here, but we finally got you. Yeah, the party has arrived at City Hall Plaza, and you're looking at these duck boats, and they're finally making their way to all of these fans who have been waiting for a very long time to see these players. All right, uh, Chris Lambert, Caitlin McCauley. See Chris Lambert taking some video because he's one of the biggest fans. There's Alex Cora right on the far left of the screen up on the boat. Let's get over to City Hall. Charmin Zacchetti's there with Mayor Marty Walsh talking about what an exciting day and what a, a great day this has been so far. Charmin, you're on. It's a big day for the city. We're out on the
on the balcony in front of City Hall, and Boston Mayor Marty Walsh is here with us now. And Mayor, you went to a couple of these games. Yeah, the first two games were incredible. Uh, the Red Sox played amazing, and what a great team this is. Uh, I had a chance to go to Caguas, Puerto Rico, with Alex Cora in the beginning of the season. Before he was even the manager, the Red Sox took him down. We went down, brought supplies down to Caguas, and I had a chance to get to know him a little bit, and just a genuine person, and, you know, I, I turned out to be an incredible manager as well for the Red Sox. And yeah, it's been a great, it's a great season. I, I just talked to some of the players earlier, Avaldi and Joe Kelly and, and Buck Holt, not Buck Holt's gone, that's old, old school, uh, uh, Brock Holt, and, um, you know, they're just, they're just down-to-earth guys, and they're great people, they all the kids with them, family men, it was just a great, it's a great what, spirit. What was their sense? They were pumped. They were excited about today. They all came, you know, they all came there early, and, and they're all excited. I've watched them on the boats on TV, and they're all excited. And here now we're seeing all Washington come through. They just, I mean, they're a bunch of players that uh, that just gelled together, and everybody had a role to play in this World Series. And you look at every single player, that somebody did something in one of the games. What's your reaction to That's that? That's great. Price sale. We got a one-two starter locked up. Now we need to get a couple more. We'll be hopefully doing this again a year from now. Um, everything going well? Everybody behaving themselves so yeah, far? Yeah, so far, so good. Uh, the commissioner hasn't called me with any problems, which is good. And, you know, I, I think, you know, for the most part, everyone's going to respect themselves. And uh, police were out early this morning, 6 o'clock this morning, getting the route ready. And they had roll call, so they, they feel good. But I haven't heard anything, uh, any, any problems at all in the city, thank God. And, and the crowd looks bigger than I expected. I didn't expect this type of crowd, but it's huge. You were talking uh, at your news conference the other day, maybe a million people. Yeah, they said about 800,000 800, or a million people, but it looks, I don't know if it's more or less, but it just seems like people are coming out of everywhere to get a glimpse of these Red Sox. Yeah, for All sure. Right. Um, and we're Mayor standing Marty obviously Walsh in front of City Charmin Hall. Cicchetti, reflecting on this day, and uh, the mayor, big job for the city. You know, you think they must have like a full-time staff just for mm -hmm. parade organization with the number of championships that we have through Boston, but we just want to enjoy the last, oh yeah, there you go. That's the L.L. Bean boot, which I learned uh, matches the custom-made boots that L.L. made for the Bean made for the team. That nice, one is nice just a little boot. small for you. We'll get a larger size to I fit do your have feet. A, I Jim. do have a giant. Jackie sport. Bradley Jr. here <laughs> uh, with other teammates celebrate. That look almost looks like one of those uh, those wrestling belts. belts. You know, whatever hardware you can bring, it's time to show it off. Jackie Bradley Jr. <laughs> right Maybe here it's the MVP belt yeah, from I, the ACLS. It should be. It should be. Go Sox. We are seeing uh, the, the excitement to continue to roll on here. And ramping up the crowd they are. This is right at uh, Boston City Hall Plaza, uh, where they're turning the corner here on Cambridge Street. But the crowds haven't died out because, remember, there are 25 of these duck boats and just maybe five or six have, have made it here to their final destination here. But nobody's deplaned just yet. They're going to have to pull up those jet bridges and get them, I mean, up, you know, their boats, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Joe Eduardo is, Nunez. Yes, and as I, we just saw uh, Rafael Devers, and I'm just thinking about people like Xander Bogarts, Andrew Benintendi, Mookie Betts, all pretty young, uh, the, some of the best players on the team, and it looks like they'll be sticking around, or what? I mean, there's, I mean, we don't need to talk about what's next quite yet, but you got to feel good about some of these young players. You're right, they have that great young core along with this pitching staff. They just picked up the uh, the option on Chris Sale for 15 million next year. So Chris Sale's on board. David Price, as we talked about, has opted in. So you got your two aces at the top of that staff. You've got uh, some guys that really have established themselves in the bullpen this postseason that will have larger roles, you would think, coming into next year. And then you have that young core, Raphael Devers. Dan Shaughnessy of the Boston Globe right now believes that Raphael Devers is going to have an extremely bright future here and is even comparing him to some of the better hitters we've seen in the history of the Red Sox. Well, he has a way about him. I mean, if you go back to Manny Ramirez when he broke in with Cleveland, he was batting seventh in the lineup there, very young in the playoffs early on. I'm not saying anybody's going to be Manny Ramirez, but Devers, he's a very fearless hitter. He's a little undisciplined and so he could be pitched to, but man, he's in the moment. I think he had 14 RBIs in his first 14 postseason games. Going back to last year against Houston, he had a couple homers and hit like 480 
in that series. Did it again this year. I was always disappointed anytime he was not in the lineup. I think he should be in there. But like you say, going back to what Kim said, I mean, the core of this team, uh, I think Bogarts is the only guy that's ever won a World Series before. So you've got new guys getting there, and, and the Bills going to come due on Betts, Bogarts, Bradley, some of those young guys. Yeah, and they're, they're, that outfield is absolutely secure in its way. We're looking at J.D. Martinez, and Devers is on that boat as well. We talked about J.D. Martinez earlier. There he is in the middle, uh, giving you the wave right there. And Devers is to his right, our left, as we look at the screen, pumping up the crowd as well. J.D. Martinez is here for a while to stay and has established himself as a, in a hurry, almost winning the Triple Crown this year in baseball, and seemed to really warm up at the end of the year, both to the fan base and as a player, because he's a little bit of an introvert, personality-wise. Yes, he's a guy who's he's always looking at video. He's looking at video during his batting practice. He wants to know what you know what's going on. When the new pitcher comes in, he gets analytics video on that. He's a very kind of thoughtful guy with that, but was not really out and about or um, didn't become a big splash in the town regarding he didn't see his name in the gossip pages or any of that stuff. He was just kind of showing up at the park every day, knocking in a bunch of runs. I think, you, as you say, Joe, he came out a little bit more in a, in a colorful way toward the end of the year and speaking out a little bit more. And, and yeah, I think uh, it'll, he'll be a guy that folks will come to embrace even more as the years go on. Here's David Price, who has, who has decided to opt in. He's holding up a Nathan of all these <laughs> signs, showing big respect cool. for his fellow pitcher right there. Go ahead, Kim. Well, I was just thinking about David Price from va fan villain to fan favorite. The way he got all choked up was crying after they won the World Series when you asked him about the team. Here he's holding up the sign for Nathan Ivaldi. And I think, you know, I don't know, I get this feeling that the way that he was treated for a while there by, uh, I don't know, the media, the fans, really got to him. He seems like a really sensitive guy. Well, it absolutely got to him, and he was insensitive is one way of putting it. He, has, uh, he was very much in tune on any criticism that was coming his way, whether it was on social media or, or on the radio or in person with questions he, uh, he would be subject to after some of his losses and the way he responded to them. But... You know, the hope now is that he's absolutely turned the corner. I mean, winning these games in the postseason, winning two games in the World Series, including the clincher, winning the clincher down in Houston. You know, there right there is Matt Barnes and Craig Kimball. And how about Matt Barnes, Dan? He's a local guy. He's a New England guy from Danbury, Connecticut. Had a lot of family out on the field after the game. He established himself in a major role this postseason. He did. That's a guy that Cora believed in all year. I mean, he, he constantly got duty. A lot of the bullpen guys were up and down, but when Barnes was healthy. He was a guy Cora constantly would go to in the seventh and eighth inning. The roles changed a little bit in the postseason because of the starters getting involved. But I think that with Kimball probably leaving, Barnes could be the uh, guy getting the audition to be the closer as his team rolls ahead to next year. We're looking at Sandy Leone holding up a World Series trophy there as they uh, as they go by. Blake Swihart on the end as well as we look down on this uh, parade coming through City Hall Plaza right now, Kim and Adam. You know, I was thinking, just, just food for thought, imagine you're a businessman from Omaha coming into Logan. You take the blue line, the Maverick T-stop, you get to Government Center T-stop, which is right where we are now, and you get off and you're like, what the heck is going on, if, you know, if you're not from here? Well, this is the best introduction to Boston one could get, because everyone's happy. There's a lot of unity throughout the community and the sports world, and it's just a, a day to, to bring our pride together as a city, as a strong city, as a winning city, and as a humble city, because we've taken it from the best example we can, guys. Uh, anybody can kind of come in on this conversation that other than hearing special and unified and uh, and well-oiled machine, we hear humility a lot when it comes to this. And it's easy to see when you see the smiles, the camaraderie, what we just saw there, uh, team members holding up other players' names to give them credit where credit is also due. Well, I love there's so many great Alex Cora stories, but one of them we showed you, we had a story about how you can go to Fenway and see all these pictures that Alex Cora was taking sort of for his team. It was sort of an inside thing where he was taking a picture and posting it up near his office after every win. It got to be 108, as you can imagine the size of that, uh, that show. But how he makes these players feel really comes through. They all talk about how he never gets down on them when they have a bad game. That builds confidence. It's just human nature. And Alex Gore just seems like he's uh, figured it out. So do they have what it takes to repeat? I mean, they probably wouldn't win 108 games again, Joe. But, I mean, you know, this party's over. Over, so let's just ask the question. Well, the wise guys out in Las Vegas, and they call them wise guys for multiple reasons, but they usually nail this, and they have installed 
the Red Sox and his co-favorites with the Houston Astros to win the World Series next year. We've got a nice little battle going on in the American League now, Dan. We've got the Yankees, the Astros, and the Red Sox, and this is going to be a nice little battle and a lot of fun, I think, for the next several years because all three teams have great cores. I agree with that. I, mean, I think the best teams are in the American League. You sort of saw that in the World Series with the Dodgers. Yeah, they really didn't, didn't come up too big in that World Series, but the Sox were a wagon by that point. They were rolling over everybody, and I think to your point, yes. And even teams like Tampa were getting better at the end of this year. So I think that, but but clearly the Strohs, the Yanks, and the Sox are the, are the class of baseball. All right, Adam, Kip. Yeah, well, we beat those guys, obviously. And as you said, uh, L.A. Dodgers were the best the National League had to offer. Obviously, uh, amazing athletes, but uh, it'll be fun to watch. And we definitely like beating the Yankees. <laughs> and as uh, Dan said, the Strohs, that wasn't bad either. Hopefully you start your mornings with uh, with seven news and the members of our today New England team Chris Anderson and Amaka Ubaka who start the day here on the news station are at the ending point for this parade but it ain't over yet guys because we've only had a few of the uh, the duck boats head into the government center area so there's still more to come what are you seeing from uh, up above. It is, it is amazing. It's a wonderful sight. You know, like Adam mentioned, we're up bright and early at 3 o'clock in the morning or dark and early because the sun's not up even at that time. But who needs coffee when you have a Sox parade? That's the adrenaline that keeps you going. These fans, it's funny, when the duck boat started turning the corner here on Cambridge Street, you saw everyone running from Government Center Plaza just to get a glimpse of their players and get a glimpse of Alex Cora and just the whole Red Sox squad as they make their way down Cambridge Street now, making that bend around the corner. Oh, yeah. Into government center and, and so much excitement and electricity filling the air. Yeah, from our vantage top here on the rooftop of our studios, it looks like the last duck boat just made its way uh, past our studios. But as Chris was just saying, you're seeing fans making their way to Stanford Street where this parade will wrap up. They are not finished yet. They're following these police cars and they are making their way right around the bend, right around the corner to catch just another glimpse of the 2018 World series champions the fourth time in 15 years that's it's remarkable incredible. it's a dynasty and you know hats off to John Henry and the team ownership group for the the team that they've built he brings in Dave Dombrowski who's an architect who has won a World Series championship before 1997 with the Marlins and built those powerful teams up in Detroit that fell a little bit short of winning a title comes to Boston they bring in Tony La Russa and some great baseball minds who sign these free agents you get in JD Martinez you bring in some of the midseason acquisitions that you you get a Mitch Moreland you get a World Series MVP that comes in and Steve Pierce so it's all those little pieces that they were able to put together and, and form the best team in baseball possibly the best Red Sox team ever they are as far as wins with 108 regular season wins 119 wins overall and a fourth World Series title here for us to celebrate in Boston yeah that argument is certainly to be made and that's what Sam Kennedy would say he says that this is the best uh, Red Sox team in in history and really as we uh, take a look behind us it really they're all moving towards the end of the parade route at Stanford Street but as you talked about Chris so many uh, clutch players and clutch plays throughout the postseason especially uh, just so many memorable moments is there anything that stood out particularly for you you know what I loved seeing and, and it was uh, David Price's redemption uh, he's been such a wonderful pitcher throughout his career he's won Cy Young Awards had a brilliant career down in Tampa Bay he, he signed the huge contract coming up here in Boston and, and just couldn't get the weight off his shoulders there in the postseason. To see him come back and redeem himself and now a World Series champion after some brilliant starts, that's really what stands out to me is just such a special moment for David Price and, and this as, team. And as we wrap up our portion, I just want to take a look at this live shot right there, Looks that good. flag, that World <laughs> Series 2018 flag, just waving on the breeze on this Halloween day. Kevin Adam, we'll send it back to you guys yeah. in the studio. You know what? We right. want to see him Chris repeat, and Amaka. Guys. <laughs> we might want to come back to you because the parade's still there right below you. Amaka, don't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back more celebrating the Sox here on the news station.
Washington is so divided these days that it's easy to forget how much we have in common, like our need for quality, affordable health care. I'm proud that on the Executive Council, we work together to expand coverage to 53,000 Granite Staters. We need more of that in Washington. In Congress, I'll fight attempts to raise premiums or deny coverage to people with pre-existing conditions, and I'll work to lower the cost of prescription drugs. I'm Chris Pappas, and I approve this message because nothing is more important than delivering results for New Hampshire. Every day since 1848, we've been working hard for you, right by your side, with everything from your very first savings account to helping you make a lifelong dream come true. East Boston Savings Bank, getting it done every day since 1848. I'm angry and appalled at what's happening in Washington. Every day, Donald Trump and the Republican Party are taking us backwards. We need public leaders who will fight back Charlie Baker wants to replace Elizabeth Warren with the guy who led Donald Trump's campaign in Massachusetts. We need to be bold, to stand up, demand more. We deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve better. I'm Jay Gonzalez, a Democrat running for governor to fight for you. Today, any big retailer can sell you that cheap bottle of wine. But at Julio's, it's always been about service, selection, and knowledge. Whether it's that perfect dinner wine, a hard-to-find whiskey, or that beautiful craft brew, Julio's has it all in our massive selection, along with our in-house tobacco shop, our specialty food items, and over 300 hot sauces. And if you don't have our Julio's Liquors VIP app, you're missing out on tastings, flash sales, and events. At Julio's Liquors, it's all about getting you what you want. No pressure, no commission, ever. Julio's Liquors, service, selection, and knowledge. Celebrating the Sox is brought to you by Commonwealth Motors. You're watching a 7 News special. Celebrating the Sox. All right, so Fenway Park, check. <laughs> Copley, check. Boylston and Charleston over by the Common, check. We are back live with our coverage of Celebrating the Sox here on Boston's City Hall Plaza. And City Hall, Hall Plaza, check, check. <laughs> Chris and Amaka are still there for us so we can get the tail end of this parade. I can't, time goes by so quickly. It was, didn't it, it seem did. like it flew by? That's what it happens did. when you're having fun. In an instant. But nobody wants to leave. Look behind us. You can see the crowd's still here in Government Center. Uh, they are just having such a good time. Even though the duck, bite, the, the duck boats have passed by, they don't want to go home. They want to revel in this and soak it all in. From our vantage point, I mean, we could hear the screams. I mean, the energy was yeah. so electric. People just pulling out their phones, just trying to get a glimpse of the players and the celebration. It was absolutely amazing. It really was. Uh, you know what? here in Boston it never gets old and we were talking about the weather and, and some parades in the past the past yeah. two Patriots parades they've been downright cold I remember the the big one of the big Super Bowl wins where we're on snowbanks covering the Patriots in and the middle of it all fans are climbing up on snowbanks so when you have the sunshine out right now this is just such a perfect day to celebrate what has been a perfect season for the Boston Red Sox so uh, and they're loaded for next year I mean it's hard to get excited about next year already because we still have uh, hockey season, football season, and basketball season with some pretty good teams to and, go through. I mean, <laughs> as a New England fan, we're just spoiled. I mean, especially this incredible Red Sox team, 108 yeah. in the regular season. Yeah. I mean, amazing. They had to beat, you know, the Astros. They had to beat the Dodgers. And, of course, they had to beat the Yankees just to the get who? here. Ugh, the, the Yankees. Yankees. <laughs> It's going to be fun, and, and we heard Joe and Dan talking about this, setting the stage for next season. There are some tough teams in the American League. Winning a World Series is hard enough. Right. Repeating as World Series champions, you saw that with the Houston Astros, that's even tougher, because they were a solid-built team, and they rolled through the World Series last year. They won the championship and then fell to our mighty Boston Red Sox. But there's the challenge for Alex Cora heading into year two. You've won a World Series now. You have to keep that energy up. You've got to keep that fight going going to try and bring home another title to title town. I mean, speaking of Alex Cora and of course these amazing players, the pressure was on since spring training from the beginning of the season and they came together in clutch moments to pull through, you know, even uh, during what game three when it was the longest in uh, World Series history. Yeah. They, you know, even with that loss, they came through battle back in game four and game five as we take a live look at these pictures and then talk about Red Sox Nation. They did this point coming out thousands of people supporting 
the World Series champions. And look, you, they, the Rich Hill then comes out in the next game, pitch, pitches a, a brilliant ball game. He's the Milton native, of course. So we didn't want to see him do too well against the Dodgers. But that decision by Dave Roberts to pull him out of the game and bring in the relievers, and, and the rest is history. The Sox battled back, won that game, and it really sucked all of the momentum that the Dodgers had after that 18-inning marathon to win that game, to come out in game four, play such a wonderful game, through that with the brilliant performance by Rich Hill, then to have your relievers give it up like that, and, and the Red Sox, it seemed like from that point on, were just steamrolling uh, on their way to another championship, which is why we're here today to celebrate. Wow. Look at these live <laughs> pictures. You see these duck boats rolling by one by one, 25 of them. You see the players there waving and their families, and Red Sox Nation moving all the way from where we are and to pretty much Stanford Street at the end, just to say they're kind of get a final glimpse. Yeah, well, this is what you want to do. You, it's a family affair. This is a, a million strong, a million strong family of Red Sox players and supporters filling the streets here in Boston in Titletown. They call it Titletown for a reason, not just because they win titles, but because the way the community embraces their teams. I mean, these teams, they mean a lot to the people who live in the city here. They mean a lot to us. We love to support them and be there for them, win or lose. So when they can bring home a championship like this, that's when everybody in the whole area wants to come out and show their appreciation. And look on the right side of your oh. screen. There's that World Series Hoisting trophy. Up the trophy. And there's the man who led the way as a rookie manager. It's incredible. It's incredible to see that. You see him there waving to the crowd, really soaking in each moment. Just so proud. Alex Cora, he won a championship as a player. He won a championship as the bench coach, of course, with the Astros last year. But he said this is the sweetest one yet. He did this as a, as a manager, as the leader of what is considered one of the best squads in Red Sox history. Debatable on, on if it's the greatest team ever. I don't think it matters. Uh, but they're going to go down in history as the winningest team ever. And most importantly, they get to hoist that commissioner's trophy and add that number nine to the trophy case. Oh, it sounds so <laughs> sweet. And I remember speaking of Alex Cora, game four, when we yeah. were four, we were down four and oh. Then he, along with Chris Sale, pumping everybody up, staying cool and calm, knowing that we would come back yeah. and take that game. And that's what they needed, that leadership. Look at uh, the right side of your screen. You saw J.D. Martinez. Uh, remember, there was there were still questions of whether J.D. Martinez in the offseason would end up in Boston. There were questions about whether uh, Fenway Park would be friendly to his hitting. Comes out and smacks 43 home runs this year. He's an MVP finalist. I mean, you've got two guys on this team, Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, who could finish 1-2 in the running for the most valuable player in the American League this season. Uh, J.D. Martinez had a career high in RBI. Mookie Betts wins a batting title. I mean, you have these guys who stepped up and gave all-star performances, and not to mention the pitching staff, when you have three Cy Young Award winners. Yeah, award as, we, winners. as we take a live look at these, at these uh, players there, you just saw uh, David Price there waving to the crowd, really enjoying the moment, mm -hmm. really a moment of redemption for him. I want to ask you, Kim and Adam, we're tossing you back in. I know you guys had plenty of late nights staying up watching these games with all of us. Is there a memory that you guys share that stands out the most to you that, that really encapsulates what this World Series was all about? There are obviously so many, but what comes just instantly is the way it all ended with Chris Sale pitching, and I just love seeing Manny Machado down <laughs> on his knees, or at least one of them. So that was a good one. And the Andrew Benintendi catch, that was just a lot, a lot of fun to watch. I mean, the pitching is awesome, and every single pitch counts, and you're on the edge of your seat, and I watched every one of them. Come on, lady. He said one what? memory. Okay. Come on. I'll stop now. <laughs> you know what's, I love okay, you to Adam, what's yours? Well, I would just say a couple of solo home runs in that last game that, that made us feel like we had it. You know, you don't want to jinx it and say it's ours, but sure felt like it. I love you to death, Kim. You know that. <laughs> Live pictures on the left, some taped uh, images on your right. We'll be showing you more of those because the, the uh, energy is electric enthusiasm is alive and we still have in the studio with us Boston Globes Don, uh, Dan Shaughnessy and our sports director Joe Mercino a lot of post parade coverage still well we've had 11 championships in 17 years in Boston and now fourth World Series in 15 years most of any team in baseball history we'll take a break we have more parade action and we'll talk about what's next for Boston sports fans stay with us protect what's most important with our family of safety technologies the 2018 Nissan Rogue now available with five advanced technologies like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection
the 2018 Rogue, the safety tech you want and more included. Lease the Rogue family for $149 per month or lease the 2018 Nissan Pathfinder just $229 per month. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Every day since 1848, we've been working hard for you, right by your side, with everything from your very first savings account to helping you make a lifelong dream come true. East Boston Savings Bank, getting it done every day since 1848. The goal is simple, get better every day. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. And here are your keys. Thanks. You guys always beat the competition on price. How do you do it? The egg is in the nest. I repeat, the egg is in the nest. Operation Ankle Biter is a go. He's got the offer. Initiate the version. They're distracting. Unleash the twins. Constantly checking the competition to guarantee you our best price every day. When can I have a turn? Never! You're watching a 7 News special celebrating the Sox. Yeah, Celebration is in store, and you're looking at video of some of the highlighted moments from this uh, parade. Eduardo Nunez aboard, Xander Bogots, and we can see that uh, you, uh, uh, just a, a fabulous morning here on this Halloween, a beautiful day across Boston, and some beautiful news as we heard about the future of David Price just before this rolling rally got started uh, uh, from our sports department, Chelsea McDonald, speaking with Price about what today means and about what the future looks like. Listen. Yeah, I'm opting in. I'm not going anywhere. This is, um, I want to win here. And we did that this year, and I want to do it again. How important is it to you that, obviously, it's not you coming back, but some of the other guys like Pierce and Yavaldi and, and Kimbrell, do you want to keep this group together? Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, we want to be able to keep as many guys here as we can. You know, we had uh, a very good team this year, and, you know, we want to continue on with that same trend. You said consistently that you always wanted to opt in, but was there any consideration otherwise, and did the postseason reaffirm that? Um, no, there, was, there wasn't any uh, reconsideration on, on my part ever. You know, I was... Um, I came here to win, you know, and we did that this year. That was very special, and now I want to do it again. All right, David Price uh, making the announcement today right before the parade that he is here to stay in Boston, hopefully filling the love. I'm sure he likes the money. It's a lot of cash that he might not have been able to get elsewhere, but I think Red Sox Nation is happy to have him. All right, so what's next for the team and for fans? I think uh, spring training is just about four months away. Let's bring in Joe Amersino and Dan Shaughnessy. Well, we start with David Price and the news today that he is opting in. And the reason this is such a big story today is because he had until 5 o'clock today to decide whether he was going to opt in for the final four years of his contract and $127 million. It's a big story because there was a lot of speculation over the last three years that he would opt out if he could pitch well enough to create market value again, something close to that 127. Sure enough, he has pitched well enough, especially in the postseason, but has decided he is going to stay, Dan. Yeah, I think uh, it would have been difficult to opt out only in that even the Players Association would have tried to block that as they did when Alex Rodriguez wanted to come here a hometown discount and get himself traded to Boston 15 years ago in this case for a player to leave 120 million on the table the PA doesn't really like that we wondered how much David Price hated it here if it was worth it for him to leave money on the table not have that match in his next contract doesn't matter now it turns out he really likes being here because he likes his teammates and he has tolerated us the talk shows the, the critics the media you know some of which he brought on himself but he also pitched okay his first year here and he's 30 excuse me 
Griffey, uh, 39 and, and 19 over three years. He's pitched pretty well for all the grief he's taken. Now he's a World Series hero. He's in for four more years. It's all good for him. He and along with Chris Sale, who the uh, Red Sox picked up the option on at 15 million next year. So this pitching staff at the top of the order is locked in for good right now. The future very bright for this team, no question about it. Kim, Adam. All right, uh, Joe, Dan, Shaughnessy, thank you very much. And we wanted to just let you know that uh, this image you're looking at, these are live images of the players on those duck boats. And it's not because we're doing another parade. It's because <laughs> they're heading back to Fenway Park. You can see the police on either side clearing the traffic as they make their way back to Fenway. Yeah, they're zooming by now. Remember I said they were flying <laughs> and I changed my mind and said crawling so that the fans could see them? Well, we're overhead as the duck boats head back to Fenway. Hey, maybe we'll catch up with some players, hear what they thought about the fans, the cheering, the celebration. Great day for the city of Boston as we celebrate the Sox, and we'll be right back. Help protect what's most important with our family of safety technologies. The 2018 Nissan Rogue, now available with five advanced technologies like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. The 2018 Rogue, the safety tech you want and more included. Lease the Rogue family for $149 per month. Or lease the 2018 Nissan Murano, just $219 per month. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Every day since 1848, we've been working hard for you, right by your side with everything from your very first savings account to helping you make a lifelong dream come true. East Boston Savings Bank, getting it done every day since 1848. This is actually under your budget. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you move in, Geico could help you save on renter's insurance. Yep, Geico helped me with renter's insurance too. Um, the walls seem a bit thin. They are, and Craig practices the accordion every night. Says the guy who sings karaoke by himself. I'm a very shy singer. You're tone deaf! Yeah, shall we uh, move on to the next one? It's a great building. You'll love it here. We have mixers every Thursday. Geico, it's easy to switch and save on homeowners and renters insurance. Commonwealth Motors. Commonwealth, Commonwealth. Those are my grandkids? What are they doing? Dad, do something. Find us fast. Got this last. Grippy. Shop us last. You'll love us. You're watching a 7 U special celebrating the Sox. The Roland Rally, a huge success that we know of, and we're looking at a, a wide shot from our helicopter, Sky 7 HD, and if you look to the left, you can see the tops of those duck boats. They're white, and they're heading right back to Fenway Park. Uh, those players have their, their valuables there, their cars, <laughs> maybe some family members, so they'll be heading back to Fenway Park, and we're staying overhead. We've also got crews on the ground uh, with inside the ballpark because maybe we'll have a chance to uh, get some reaction from the players. We've heard so much from them, and we've heard so much reaction about the season, the postseason, the World Series, what it means to be champions, but what does it mean to stroll through the streets of our uh, beautiful city and to be cheered and celebrated by as many as a million people who took some time off work, who put on their best uh, fall jackets to come out and celebrate in style, as we always do. Yes, and just the memories now. The duck boat fumes. <laughs> I was asked right. earlier for a favorite moment uh, from the series, and I got cut off by my friend Adam over here. After <laughs> I got to my third one, I, I was supposed to just give one. But it's a good time as uh, we wait for the players to get back to Fenway just to sort of reflect on uh, some of the postseason memories, some of the biggest moments after this legendary season. So for that, let's go back to Ammo and Dan Shaughnessy. Yeah, I think there's there's memorable moments, there's uh, images that you won't forget, and then there's guys that you're happy for, that play a role on this team. Guys that you've followed for a few years now, who've got a great personality, good guys, and for me, Jackie Bradley Jr. sticks out in a big way, because mid-season, over the summer, everyone was calling for this guy to be traded to the National League, where he could be a soft-hitting, great-fielding uh, center fielder. Sure enough, Alex Cora shuts him down for a couple days, talks him back up, and puts him out there. He starts hitting the ball 
ball a little bit, signs of life in the second half, comes into the American League Championship Series and does work with two outs. He knocks in nine runs. He's the ALCS MVP. For me, that's a guy I'll remember and a guy I'm really happy for, Dan. Well, and fans love that guy because of all the spectacular catches he makes during the year. And as you say, MVP the ALCS pretty hard to hoot on him after that I'm happy for David Price uh, I agree with the last thing he said when he said he is the trump card now and you guys have played that car well and now I have it because I mean you know I didn't like what he did a couple of years ago and he brought up that on himself but through his postseason failures he was always able to go out there and answer the questions when it was over even that horrible night against the Yankees he comes into the room and he takes his beating like a man and I I, I have respect for that a guy like Christian Vasquez who really faded from view during the season ended up being the number one catcher throughout the World Series. You didn't have to hear all the Sandy Leon love, who's a great guy and a good catcher, but all of a sudden Vasquez has emerged as the top dog again in that crew there. I mean, you could go down the list. There's a million guys, you know, to see, you know, finally win a thing. But again, no one on that team is, has a World Series ring except for Bogart. So for them, it's a new, great experience. And as you tell the story through the years, years from now, they'll say, tell me about that 2018 team and that run through the World Series. And one thing that will stick out for me is is your closer and Craig Kimbrell. The guy gave up an earned run in almost every outing, home runs too in those situations, and was their guy. And somehow with a closer giving up home runs and runs night in and night out and making it into a high wire act, they still go on to win the World Series. Really, I mean, Mookie Betts did not do a lot in the postseason after well, the year that he had. They, they got this done. Sale, I think, pitched five innings in the World Series. Betts didn't get a lot done. Uh, so they were really doing it with guys like Pierce and Nunes and Ivaldi, guys that you didn't think of during the course of the year. Uh, those moments, you know, when they go to New York and it's 1-1, the sky is falling and they win 16-1, to that's a moment. And then after the historic loss in Game 3 of the World Series, 18 innings, 7 hours and 20 minutes, they're down 4 nothing in the 7th inning and it's going to be 2-2. Then they score nine unanswered runs, and they never look back. I'm glad you brought up that 1-1 scenario and situation in the American League Division Series when the Sox had lost to the Yankees here. Aaron Judge walks out playing New York, New York. It was a moment, I think, for the fans, and it was encapsulated in that moment because then they went on to New York and won two in a row. But as we were talking earlier off-camera, there was something to that. May, that may have been the rally cry within the clubhouse with Alex Cora. That may have been the moment. They played New York, New York as they celebrated out in L.A. winning the World Series. It feels like it was, Joe. They went 10-12 and 12 after that game against really good competition. And they won, I think, six road games in a row. So this, they were, they were a wagon. They were really inspired. They were sparked. They kind of put on their big boy pants after losing that home game against the Yankees and became the 108-win team that you saw all year. They were a 108-win team that um, many people people nationally did not favor to beat the Yankees and then many people did not favor to beat the Astros so they played that card as well us against the world no one thinks we can do it we've been disrespected somehow yeah. after winning 108 it's weird games. to be able to do that and I understand why they did it because I was one of the ones who didn't think they'd get by the Yanks I thought this is not going to go well now they have to go to New York but once I saw 16 to 1 in game three I was in and after that they really never, they, they were never stopped after that. And lastly, I think as, as you tell this story for years to come, Alex Cora becomes the central figure in all of this. The big changes that happen with this team coming into the season is they change their manager and they got the right guy at the right time, along with the right bat in the middle of their lineup in J.D. Martinez. They certainly did. I mean, really, it was the same team that won, they could bow out of the playoffs two years in a row in the first round, except for those two guys you just referenced. The new manager, the new slugger, and the new attitude that they took and carried through the end of October. All right, Kim, Adam? Oh. All right. Uh, to the right of your screen, you can see some of the highlights uh, from this World Series. But to the left, uh, live pictures from Sky 7 HD. This looks like the Mass Ave Bridge over the beautiful Charles River. And there they are, lined up like trains, but they're duck boats, about 25 of them, uh, using an, an, an alternate route, if you will, heading back to Fenway Park. We're told that's where the boats will go. But they're stopped on the bridge right now as they prepare to make a turn. They are uh, escorted by police who are likely making room for them, or maybe they're just getting a 
photo op because from that view, if you look uh, uh, to the north, you get a really beautiful shot of Beacon Hill and, and downtown Boston. Yeah, you see the uh, police officers uh, in front and in back and around there on the motorcycle. I, they are taking off again, and I get the feeling they were just sort of waiting for everybody to catch up so all the boats could be together and uh, sort of continue that parade atmosphere. Uh, before they took off from Fenway Park, there was a big celebration inside Fenway, and uh, we heard from a lot of the ownership and management, but also from the players, including uh, MVP of the World Series, Steve Pierce, talking about how he grew up being a Red Sox fan. And here's a guy who thought about throwing in his hat and his bat. He'd been around the block, that's for sure, and stuck with it and ended up uh, MVP here in Boston his uh, with his favorite sports team let's listen to what he had to say just a couple of hours ago I always say I was born in New England these people were born into this you were born into this you were that's born right, a Red that's Sox right. fan that's right yeah yeah didn't really have a chance when I was, when I was younger you know this you know my dad's from up here and, and uh, you know Patriots Red Sox that's all I ever knew so to be part of this to, to think that in about 20 minutes you're going to be standing on a duck boat driving through the city of Boston in a championship parade. If you could go back and tell 12-year-old Stevie Pierce, someday you'll be on a championship parade with the Red Sox, what would that kid have said? He would have believed it. <laughs> he, would, he would have believed it. This, this is a dream come true for me, and, and, and I, am, I am so thankful to be here right now. You've been on a lot of teams, mm -hmm. a long journey to get to this point, to get this opportunity. You spent a half season here with these fans. You know how they feel about this team. What has that meant to you here over the last few months? Uh, uh, these are the best fans in sports right here. Sign. Let's keep thinking. Did I get excited or what? <laughs> I'm like, where are they? Where are they? There they are. This is a cool shot. The Sitco sign with the duck boats coming by. So, hey, they got it. They had a good uh, strategy there. They do. I'm going to remember that. A they nice pace. Time. Not that I ever get to go. Yes, yeah, so here are the duck boats back at... Uh, back home heading toward uh, Kenmore Square and, and back over to Fenway Park where again we understand that's where the players will uh, disembark uh, from the duck boats and uh, question is will they get in their cars and head home will there be uh, another gathering there believe me we're, we've got all bases covered no pun intended we've got uh, crews inside Fenway Park so we'll catch the action once they pull back in going back to 2013 Kim when you and I were anchoring our Sox parade coverage from within Fenway Park same sort of thing happened they started there they went to City Hall then they came back and that was the moment I remember most is when you uh, were able to drag Big Poppy right off one of those duck boats and talk to us live on the air to talk about the parade and the excitement because this is a new element of attention of celebration uh, because we're not in a ballpark so it's got to be sort of unfamiliar territory for those who haven't been on these duck boats to be out on those and just to see the fans uh, beneath them just cheering on and on yes I do remember that d day we'll always remember this one but uh, John Farrell was the coach back then, and we were talking to him, too. Another uh, manager who won uh, his first year, of course, Terry Francona being the third, but uh, winning the World Series your first year as a manager of the Red Sox, which is exactly what Alex Cora did. And he spoke this morning at Fenway right before they boarded the duck boats about why this team are world champions. I just hope they... They understand how important this is for, for our fan base. Like I've been saying since day one, this is, this is crazy. This is madness, you know. And uh, you guys live this 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, your ep expectations are way up there. But one thing for sure, the same expectations you guys have, that group down there has it too. And that's what they're the world champs. Alex Cora there speaking at Fenway Park before the rolling rally began. Uh, so we're going on about two hours uh, from the time that the, the boats began to roll until the time they get back to Fenway Park. And you can see that uh, nobody seems to be taking a nap. There's still plenty of energy. Uh, they're amped up because what they just went through, I mean, imagine being in any parade, right? It's sort of like a childhood dream, even if it's a small town 4th of July event. This is like uh, the parade of all parades here in the city of Boston, celebrating our Red Sox. There's Fenway Park, Lansdowne Street. There is the World Series trophy once again being hoisted. Four of them we've seen here from start to finish. And now they go to a safe place where they can just be at 
admire and we can jog our memories back to the moments that led up to this moment on this Halloween, this beautiful October day in the city of Boston. And thanks to Boston's finest, keeping the parade route safe and a happy place for everyone who went out today. They were saying, Kim, the estimates from mayor's office, about a million people, and it certainly looked like that from images we've seen from above and down on the ground. There's Alex Cora just speaking about him and the World, uh, the World Series trophy once again. Yes, we do appreciate our police officers and our fans for just really leaving us all with uh, good memories today. Uh, we'll continue to look live here as the duck boats, all 25 of them, head back to Fenway. Uh, yeah, these guys have had a long season, uh, kind of the ups and downs, all the adrenaline that they likely felt during the, uh, the series. And uh, after the win, you come home, you sort of realize how tired you are, then you amp back up for this parade, but they're probably ready for a little bit of a break. Uh, as we continue to watch the Doug Boats return to Fenway, uh, let's listen into Jackie Bradley Jr., who was speaking at the, uh, at the park just before the parade about playing in the postseason. Yeah, you couldn't write a better script. What an amazing story, an amazing ride it's been. Um, during the playoffs, it didn't even feel like it was the playoffs. It, was, it felt like a continuation of the year. Um, you know, we continue to, you know, take each game one at a time. And after we were win, we would just try to focus on the next. And, you know, it, it was just an amazing ride. We have some more player interviews that we're going to uh, jog back and listen to as we uh, revel in this moment, but we've only got like uh, two and a half minutes left with Boston Globe's Dan Shaughnessy. As long as you're still on the mic, Dan and, and Joe, our sports uh, director, what, what, have, what do these players do next? Is it, is it beach time? Is it R&R? &R? Is it back to their families? Um, the typically, gym. yeah, what, what goes on? The gym? Well, it's always a quick turnaround for these guys after yeah. a World Series. You add an extra month to the season, and, and, you know, a lot of these guys are already talking about coming down to spring training in January, so this is fast. They do. They scatter to the four winds right now. You won't see a lot of them around here. There aren't many locals in this crew. It's a young guys. But I think that, like you say, Joe, the month is the season longer now, and spring training gets earlier and earlier. Uh, by the time we get to Atlanta for the Super Bowl, Joe, <laughs> yeah. I expect some of these guys will already be in Florida gearing up for next year, and then we'll get down there in early February just to uh, see how things are looking, take shape of the next season. So, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, they still... There's no more like letting yourself get out of shape in the offseason. They work out. They go to Arizona. They, they stay fit. So they want to keep their jobs and, and be ready when the bell goes off in, 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 in Fort Myers. And, and this team in particular seems to have real good bonds with their families. I've seen just in some of these celebrations and being around the team, guys out there with their families, this is the time to actually reintroduce themselves into the family unit for most of them. Yeah, it's been a, a grueling, rigorous, long haul for them. It's such a, it's 200 day season and they've been at this since uh, going back to early February last year. And uh, so now they get a chance to just be with the kids, be with the wife, you know, maybe take a road trip, take, have some fun, but uh, they'll be right back at it before you know it. And in terms of the team, off-field business, front office right now, uh, that ramps up quickly enough, too, because oh decisions have to be made. They're a month behind, so to speak, on who they're going to re-sign, re what they're going to do in free agency. Yeah, there's like general managers meetings next week, and you'll start to hear guys, you know, who's a free agent, who's coming and going. I mean, the times when, like, guys like David Price were signed, it was during this period three years ago. So you yeah. look at the big names that will be coming and going. You're going to have big names from other teams going, and, and you, on this team, what happens with Kimbrell? What happens with Evaldi, Pierce? Those guys, are, it's unknown. Yeah, and they've got some work to do. Kim, Adam. Thank you, gentlemen. Dan Shaughnessy from The Globe. We appreciate uh, you joining us today. And the duck boats are not only back at Fenway, we are starting to see people come off the boats. And we're keeping an eye on uh, any players just to see if they still have a little bit left in them to talk about uh, what it felt like to have a million of their fans cheering them on and thanking them in this most special way today. Let's step in and listen to, well, actually we just, Steve Cooper is there uh, trying to round up some players. If he's able to get somebody live, we'll just, we'll just uh, turn off our mics and go straight to that. But it's interesting how, how they coordinate these parades because, uh, again, going back to 2013 after the parade, the duck boats drove right 
on to the diamond in Fenway Park, right up, right up there. Let's listen in to Steve Coop. No, oh, he's looking. He's they got... they want to go get some rest. Well, maybe. that's family. <laughs> some of these players. <laughs> but anyway, they pulled the boats right up uh, into the into the ballpark in 2013. Now it looks like they're back out on Lansdowne Street. Um, you know, preserve the grass because mm -hmm. it looks pretty beautiful out there, and the players are. We making their next move. Yeah, we've had so many, I can't remember, but there was another one that ended at City Hall Plaza, and then I think they boarded buses either right, oh, we're, right. we're actually right by City Hall Plaza, and they were right down at the end of our, our, our road here and behind City Hall, and I think Cooper was on that beat too, because he managed to catch up with some players uh, as they were leaving uh, City Hall Plaza, so it's a lot of fun. There are police officers out there to keep fans at a safe distance, and there are also uh, Red Sox security trying to, to give the players a little bit of a uh, the space between the crowds and and where they need to go next but you know if there's anybody who can grab somebody and talk to them live it's Steve Cooper and uh, looks like back out on the field we are seeing the players arrive back and uh, make their way to I don't know if they go to the, the clubhouse or if they go to the, the parking area but we can see that uh, they're still walking they're still uh, texting their friends right there's Steve <laughs> Cooper let's listen uh, yeah.